you have obviously changed your diet as well as your mindset and there are kind of pillars that you follow. Can you talk to us a bit about them? Yeah, absolutely. So I teach and practice what I call the five pillars of wellness. Yeah. And they're about being mindful of what you're eating, what you're drinking, what you're thinking, and how you're resting and renewing. So eating, drinking, thinking, resting, and renewing. It's the basis of lifestyle medicine. And it rests on a foundation of stress management because we know that stress creates many of our chronic, I won't swear, um, issues. <laughs> And so it's like the number one contributor to chronic disease. Mm. And so, but the optim, the key word there is being mindful. It's not about being perfect. Better, doing a little bit better today is much better than being perfect. It's, as you know, it's not possible. Mm. But I think we put so much pressure on ourselves. And a lot of us have an all or nothing approach to wellness. And what I have seen doing this for over 20 years myself, but also working with thousands of people, is when we lower the bar a bit, it's easier to get started. Mm. And so when I look at the pillars, it's, you know, it's an overall direction. Are you eating well more often than not? Are you drinking water? It's very simple. Is your body hydrated? Are you moving? And in a way that's joyful that you that you actually appreciate and have fun with. And how's your sleep going? If that's the place where you're struggling the most, then that's where you put your attention. Um, and so again, it it's the basis of lifestyle medicine. It's the basis of longevity. It's the basis of recovery. And I think oftentimes we try to find the quick fix or the latest hack or whatever the most recent influencer or celebrity du jour is into. And yet we overlook the basics, which to me is home base and a place where you can, you know, you can grow, you can prove, you can ideate, you can try things, but forget starting with the superfood. Mm -hmm. Right. What did you change in your diet? I went plant-based. So I went from the standard American diet, which we've outsourced to the rest of the world. So <laughs> you probably know what that looks like. Yeah. Um, and I, I remember leaving my doctor's office and going to Whole Foods. And I had never been in a big like health food store like that before, truly. Um, and I knew vegetables were good, but not for the reasons why I know that they're good now. And I was very well overwhelmed because it was also new. Mm. A lot of the things that I was eating or even seeing were new. Like I had never seen kale. Now kale needs a publicist. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I grabbed a cookbook and I just started to teach myself. Um, and I went plant-based par partly because after a lot of my own research and stumbling around and being my own guinea pig, um, I started to realize that the people who I considered the, you know, kind of the, the, the go-to experts that I was interested in could all agree on one thing, whether or not they could agree on everything new, but they could agree on one thing, which was plants were really good. Mm. And especially for people who are dealing with chronic illness, but this is also for people who are interested in prevention, reducing inflammation is also really good. Mm. Inflammation, stress, again, these are the triggers for chronic illness, especially when it's chronic stress and chronic inflammation. And so it was removing the inflammatory foods from my diet. And, uh, and it grew. I started macrobiotic and I went raw food. Like it just grew and evolved over time. Um, but thankfully I found this way of living early, even though it would evolve it, it, I still stuck with being plant-based. And how does it make you feel now? I mean, you know, wonderful. I, I think that there's ups and downs like everything else because I started this when I was 30, I'm 53. So 
as we change, our body's needs change, our hormones change, you know, mm. we go on different health journeys and we may need different things at one point and other things later. And so I, I won't say that any wellness practice is going to make you feel 110% all the time. I think to expect that is to not understand how the body works. Mm. Um, but yeah, more often than not, I have felt really good and been very healthy. And again, mm. this isn't just for somebody living with a chronic illness. This is, this is for everybody listening, you know, about how am I making energy deposits instead of constant withdrawals mm. from the food I'm choosing, the lifestyle I'm living, you know, whatever it is. I mean, you know, you, mm. I find it sometimes it can be very overwhelming. And I think a lot of people that would listen to this podcast would find this too. You know, in one camp, you have people saying like, it's protein. The research is now protein, especially if you're going through menopause. Um, it's a way to build muscle. Uh, it's, you know, what's going to kind of nurture you for a long period of time. And then there are other camps that I've spoken to who talk about inflammation and talk about plant-based diets uh, and how amazing they have been. You know, I, I talked to a guy called, you might know him, Dr. Jeffrey Rediger on this podcast a couple of times and he wrote the book Cure and he talks at length about what he's seen with plant-based diets, especially with people who have cancer or tumours or um, any illness like that and how amazing it's been. It is so confusing there is so much information out there. And for anyone navigating the information, trying to work out what they should do, what advice do you have for them? You know, don't get overwhelmed. It's not worth it, quite honestly. It just creates more stress and anxiety. And I think you're not going to get it perfect. And like I said, getting started is better than perfection. So often I see people just hang back and not even get to the starting line because mm. they are overwhelmed or they feel like they've got to get it right and they have to follow the proper protocol and whatnot. I would say you need to experiment. I, I teach thousands of people in my community and most of them aren't plant-based, mm. but guess what? They're eating more plants. And you can get all, you can get plenty of protein on a plant-based diet. But I, again, I'm not saying that you have to be a hundred percent. I'm saying that if we look at inflammation, we look at the root causes and we look at things like eating too many animal products, or especially from factory farms, eating too much processed stuff, eating too much sugar and fake foods, mm. then we know we're creating an inflammatory condition in our body that's going to eventually break down in one way or the other. It doesn't mean you're gonna necessarily get cancer, um, but our lifestyle style choices really do matter. Mm. That's the basis of epigenetics, that our genes are not our destiny. You know, we come to this beautiful life with a predisposition for something, you know, and sometimes diet and lifestyle might be what pulls the trigger. Um, but again, the body is, is incredibly powerful and has a deep ability to heal, to stabilize, to thrive, even in difficult conditions. Mm. Um, so go back to what I said earlier, which is lower the bar. You find yourself in that fear and anxiety, then it's really about doing the, the mindset stuff, doing the mindfulness work to really soothe your nervous system and come back into center so that you can Go make a salad. <laughs> I wonder through your journey, what have you learned about the mind? What have you learned about the mind and its relationship to the body? Well, I think the mind-body connection is very powerful. It's proven. Um, it all starts there. Mm. All the healthy food in the world doesn't matter if you're really struggling and uh, especially with fear, anxiety, depression. Uh, and I think that the work that we can do to improve our mental well being is so worthwhile because it has this huge ripple effect, not only in our physical health, but our 
emotional health, our relationships, and truly the quality of our overall life. I mean, I don't even have to say this. Everybody out there listening understands that. Um, and I think that there's basic practices that each and every one of us can do that sort of not only help us feel better, but help us build a, a deeper relationship with ourselves. Mm. Um, you're not gonna do anything that's good for you if you don't like yourself. It's really hard to do it. I mean, you can fake it for a while, but it gets pretty exhausting, mm. right? So yeah. if, if that's the place you find yourself in, then that's the first relationship to heal. Um, because when you start to enjoy your own company, when you start to feel content and with your own companionship, when you even start to get excited and curious about life and all of its possibilities, then to me, sky's the limit, no matter what's mm. going on with your life.